I'm in sax.co.uk, I've been here filming a bit of a comparison video, here are all my Yamaha saxes, and it occurred to me this was a good opportunity to do a quick tip for you guys, um, while I've got a slightly cheaper brand saxophone with me. So I'm going to talk about top tones and how to make them a little bit richer and wider, and the best example is on a saxophone that doesn't do it for you. So when I give examples of my lovely Selma, it's like a four grand saxophone, so obviously it's going to do a lot of the hard work for you. So, number one rule, my mother taught me well, if you can, cheat. <laughs> um, so if you're holding anything kind of C, C sharp, D, then you can hold your right hand down and, oh, I can hear a flute in the background. It's very busy in here today, so excuse the background noise. Um, you can hold your right hand down and we'll take it down and flatten it for you. So if I show you now with a C, here's my, here's my C without. And here's me putting the hand down with it. You can hear it going, so it's flattening out for me, which is fabulous. Um, it's not practical to do that if you're moving quickly between these notes, but if you're holding a C, a C sharp, or any of the palm keys, here's my D. If I'm doing any of those top notes, having that right hand down um, really helps just, and it also warms up the sound because you've got more tone going through the saxophone, you're covering up more of the holes, so it's not quite so thin. If you imagine you're playing a palm key D, the tube is literally only that long, so it's a teeny little tube. Um, now, certain notes that you can't do that to, B, oh, B is like my Achilles heel, I'm so bad at that note. Um, it, needs a, it needs a lot of work, you can't put your right hand down, that's going to turn it into a B flat. It's not what we want, we don't want to take it down a whole semitone, we just want to flatten it a little bit. So that's where your, your actual skill has to come into it. Okay, so uh, for a B, to warm that sound up and flatten it down a little bit, my biggest piece of advice will be to avoid any embouchure movement. You want your natural shape to be there as a, as a point, as your kind of go-to. You don't really want to have to adjust it too much. Think more about your throat. So that is your... Uh, it's attached to your tongue. <laughs> so if you think about the, the back of your tongue, which is attached to your throat, imagine that, like you're yawning, like you're steaming up glass, that area there, you can see my throat doing it now. So here's normal throat, and then I'm gonna bullfrog it. Normal throat, bullfrog. <laughs> so let me show you what that does to my B. You can hear the difference, yeah? Now, if you sit with the tuner and that still doesn't take it down enough, then you can start messing with your embouchure. But we're talking about tiny differences. So normally your embouchure is quite an E shape. You want to take it more from an E to an O. But kind of like you're blowing a kiss, like O, O, boo, boo, be do, O. That kind of O, not O, not like that. And let me show you, if I don't move my throat, how that moves it. So here's my E shape going into my O shape. You see it's quite extreme and it's very difficult to control. So you want to start with the throat and then if it needs a little bit more to flatten it down, then you can start moving the embouchure. Okay, hope that was helpful for you. Give it a thumbs up if it was. And I will see you in the next video soon. Bearing in mind, I have a playlist, all of these quick tips that um, are like all sort of quick five minute videos. So check them out when you're on the bus, when you're on the plane, don't have your phone on on the plane, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Anyway, everywhere you go, you could be watching and learning, because learning is fun. See you. I'm serious about this subscribing thing. Hit the button, do it. Do it, or I'll drop some tax. I will, I will, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll...